Welcome to your exclusive episode of the first unit, Uncertainties and Graphing. Today we're going to look at how to find meaning from your slope. At this point, you should be done with your linearized graph. You should have your maximum slope and your slope uncertainties fully calculated, which means you know what your slope is with a value and its units. Most of the time when we're doing labs in physics, we're trying to establish whether or not a theory works, trying to compare your findings from what we've learned in class. So when you're doing a lab, you're trying to find evidence that supports these theories. A strong evidence from your lab is whether or not your slope matches with a certain constant in a physics equation. Here are some general steps when we are deriving meaning from a slope. You must have your linear graph with the slope and the y-intercept calculated, ready to go. The second step is you want to find your relevant theory, rearranging that theory or that equation so that your y variable is isolated to one side, sort of like this, y is equal to mx plus b. So it kind of matches that format. Then you're going to compare the slope from your graph to some combination of constants inside your equation. So after rewriting your physics equation, it should look like some sort of numbers times the variable that's in your x axis. Then you will find what your slope means and from there you can derive, say, a constant inside your equation to and compare it with known values. Of course, all this means nothing until we go over some examples. We're going to start with the first example, one that you've seen many times, hopefully. I've included a drawing, so imagine a person running forward at a constant speed. So on my x-axis, imagine that I have something like distance measured in meters. And then it, of course, the distance increases over time, t measured in seconds. So that kind of looks like this guy running a constant velocity. You have your slope ready to go. I'm just going to say that the slope is roughly, I don't know, say five meters over seconds being the slope of the graph. Okay, so that's step one. Have your linear graph ready. Second step, identify the relevant theory. Well, you've seen this before where the speed of, of something going at a constant speed is the distance over time. Okay, that's your relevant physics equation. Third step, you want to rearrange the equation so that the y variable is isolated on one side. When I mean by y variable, it means that the y variable on your y axis in your equation is on one side of the equation. So you have to isolate for d, which is the d in your y axis. So let's start over here. We have v is equal to d over t. To isolate for this t on one side, we're going to multiply both sides by t. Getting rid of the t leaves us with d is equal to vt. Now in the fourth step, you want to compare your newly rearranged equation to y equals mx plus b. So that would look like y is equal to mx plus b. In this case, our b seems like it's zero at this point over there. So let's say for this example, our b is zero. Then you can take a look at all of the constant symbols that match up. y, which is your y-axis, matches up with the distance that's traveled. Same here as your y-axis. We do know that time is in your x-axis and matches with the y variable in y equals mx plus b. Therefore, the only thing that's left over for it to be the slope is the velocity. So interestingly, your slope in this case is the velocity or the speed in this case. This is equal to v and v is equal to or your slope, big M, from your graph is 5 meters per second, which means the slope of this graph tells you that the runner is running at five meters per second at constant speed. That is the meaning of this slope of this graph. If you actually know the actual speed of this runner, 
you may be able to compare that one to the one that you find and see if there's a discrepancy, which I will talk about later. Next example, say you are measuring the voltage and the current going across the resistor. So let's say you have an ammeter attached to the circuit, attached to a battery, and you have a voltage, a voltmeter across your resistor of resistance R, and you want to see the relationship between the voltage and the current. This is something that was done in Science 9, if you don't remember it, it won't be that detrimental. But let's say that I graphed voltage on my y-axis and I graphed current in my x-axis measured in A, amps, voltage measured in volts, V. And what I found was I found some sort of linear equation relationship between the two and there's my graph. So from my graph, I was able to find the slope and let's say I find the slope was say five. I don't know why I'm stuck with the value five. Let's say it was five and the, the, cur the units for my slope is V over A. And if I go to say my textbook or my notes, I will find that this particular relationship relates to what is called the Ohm's law. And if you don't remember the Ohm's law, it's not the end of the world. This is just an example. And Ohm's law is V equals I R. This is Ohm's law. If you want to go do some background reading, V voltage equals current, which is I here. I'll put it over here so you kind of know it's the current, current times resistance. This is current. Now, it looks like I don't need to rearrange my equation because I have my y already in my, is isolated in the Ohm's law already. So I don't need to isolate for my y. My x variable is my current, this is this guy over here, he's hiding inside this other side of the equation. But I, what I might want to do is I might want to write the equation like this. I'm going to write it like V is equal to R times I. So now, why did I do that? Because I want to match it with the Y equals MX plus B equation. So here B is looks like a zero in this example, so I'm going to ignore B but it looks like the Y matches with the Y for my Y axis. The I, which is in my X axis, matches with the X in my Y equals MX plus B equation. What is left for the slope is the resistance. So my slope, which is M, is actually the resistance, R. And in my equation, from my findings, I found the slope to be five, five V over A, and those of you who know the actual units for resistance is 5 ohms with that little symbol, Greek letter there. Again, the slope of your graph means something significant in terms of a from a relevant physics equation. And of course, if you know what the actual resistance in used in a lab was, you can compare with your own findings and see if there's a discrepancy. And if there is or if there's not, that's plenty to talk about in your lab report. I will go on to the next example. I'm actually going to use something similar to this example. I am going to turn things around. Instead of putting my voltage in my y axis, I'm going to put it in my x axis. Voltage is over here and current I'm going to put over here. So now once I have these both on my x and y axes, let's say that was, ooh, I don't like that. Let's say this was the relationship. And let's say I went ahead and found the slope to be 0 0.20. This time the units are A over V instead. So similar lab, maybe. And uh, I've just changed the axes. Now what? Well, again, Identify the relevant physics equation. Again, it's the same scenario which I tested the volts across the resistor, measure the current, and except I put it in different parts of the equation. Oh, sorry, different axes of the graph. This is still Ohm's law, but now I'll have to rearrange the equation to solve for I, because now I is in my Y. Notice the I is hiding over here. I want to rearrange the equation so that my current I in my Y axis is by itself like this. So I want I is equal to blah, 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 whatever that is. So how to do that? Well, I have V is equal to IR to isolate for my I. 
I'm going to need to put R or divide R on both sides to get rid of the R, which then leaves me with I is equal to V over R. Let me write it over here. I is equal to V over R. Now, this is a little troublesome because it doesn't quite match with Y is equal to MX plus B. So I'm going to need to do one more thing, which I believe was step number five. Rewrite my equation so it looks like blah, 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 jumbo jumbo numbers times x as my variable. And x as my variable in this case will be my voltage because it's on my x axis. So I'm going to rejiggle this a little bit. It's not that bad. What I want is I want v. So I have v over here and I need something that multiplies v that gives me v over r which in this case is 1 over r. Okay, so let's rewrite this. Rewriting this will look like i is equal to 1 over r times v gives me my original equation here. I'll put a times in here. And matching that with y equals mx plus b, my b is looking like it's still roughly 0. So that's 0. But notice that the i and the y match up. The 1 over R matches with the M, and the V, the voltage, matches up with the X axis, which is exactly what I wanted. But notice the funny thing is, my slope is 1 over R. And from my graph, this is 0.20A over V. You might be wondering, okay, so I'm done. My resistance is 0.20, right? Uh, be careful. This is 1 over resistance is equal to 0.20. If you want to find the actual resistance from your graph, you need to solve for R. This is going to be a, an extra step because your slope, you need to do an extra step to solve for that particular symbol. So here I need to solve for my symbol of interest, which is R, resistance. Solving for R, I have 1 over R is equal to 0.20A over V. Here's a trick I can show you. If you take the reciprocal of one side of the equation, you can take the reciprocal of the other side of the equation as well. Imagine this is over 1. You take this reciprocal, you get R is equal to 1 over 0.20A over V, which is just 5. If you have a fraction of a fraction, you can just reciprocalize, by the way, that's not a word, reciprocalize the units, so I have V over A instead, so flipping the units. Or, this is 5 ohms. So notice that we've taken an extra step at the end to further derive the meaning of the slope, because it doesn't quite give us what we wanted.